thing is that I'm um, willing to fix, okay? Uh, so today we are going to finish chapter 10. We only have, I think, one major topic left. Uh, I think we can finish that. And by the end of the class, we will have a quiz. Hopefully, uh, I'm not sure if everyone has a pen, but uh, please borrow one from your classmates if you do not have a pen or pen. Uh, but before we go back to chapter 10, I want to discuss one question. So that's uh, the chapter 9A assignment will be due tonight. So if you have not read that yet, please do that. Uh, I'll talk about this for a while. Uh, I'm not sure if I have talked about this one in class or not, but uh, let's do this again. So the whole chapter, this uh, uh, chapter 9A uh, assignment is all about sampling distribution. You know the population parameter, mean or proportion, then you will study the distribution of your sample statistic. So this is the question number nine. Uh, we got a few uh, numbers here, but after you, you read these questions, you need to know it's talking about uh, a mean. So we got some sample from a population and we have, uh, let me see. So we are talking about the mean collateral level of your sample. You are studying the sample distribution of your mean, so y bar. We know y bar follows a normal distribution with the mean and standard deviation. So if you read the, the question, we are given a few numbers. We are given the population mean, which is, let me, let me put it here. So the population mean is, uh, what is that, 207. So that's our population mean, that's this. And we have the population standard deviation. So let's use the sigma to denote that. So that's going to be 30. But we want to find the mean and standard deviation for your sample statistic or your first sample mean. Based on the uh, discussion we had for in that, that chapter, what is the mean here? So it's just the population. Uh, let's put the seven, uh, 207 there. So we need some calculation for the standard deviation. This standard deviation but if you do not remember the, uh, the expressions, you can go back to the textbook or the slides. It's equal to the standard deviation over the square root of sample size. What is sample size? Uh, sample size is 41. Let me put it here. Uh, we are using your sample. So your sample size is 45. Sorry. Oh, we need to know. Then we just plug in the numbers. So 30 over 41. <coughs> so we got the distribution. But we need to do some calculation. Let me do this in Excel. standard deviation which is <coughs> over the square root of, of your sample size which is 41. Okay, you got the mean standard deviation, but now we want to calculate what's the probability that the y bar where sample mean, let me put this y bar there, is less than 207. So we know this y bar follows a normal distribution. So let me use the normal distribution function. So the x or the number we are interested in is 207 and mean is here we have the standard deviation and because the formula is y bar less than or equal to a number that's a cumulative distribution function. So I need to put 2 
recall it as the sample mean is between 202 and 2. Oh, so this is the one we want to calculate. The y bar. want to use step crunch, um, you can use the <coughs> function. But if you want to use Excel, we have to uh, calculate two things. <coughs> One is because the Excel function can only calculate the, prob the probability that the random variable is less than that. So we have to calculate this probability We uh, calculate this function. Uh, sorry, this question. So part C is uh, similar. You can just put uh, the Excel function there. That's it. But the important thing here is to calculate the standard deviation mean. We don't have to calculate after you have the mean standard deviation. You just use the normal uh, distribution function in Excel or the. So if you have, so any questions on on the on the. On the so if you have additional questions on this uh, chapter 9A assignment, uh, please let me know. Um, probably we don't have uh, time to go over all additional uh, questions in class, but uh, if you want me to record a video, please send me the, the question. Okay. <coughs> We were talking about hypothesis testing. For the hypothesis testing, um, the first thing we need to know is that is to study the population parameters. So in the hypothesis testing, we have two applications. One is to study the population proportion, which was covered in the last class. And the other one is to study the population mean. So in this class, we are going to talk about the how to do a hypothesis testing for the population mean. But the procedure wise is, is very, very similar. So when we were talking about the hypothesis testing for the uh, population <coughs> proportion, the very first thing we need to uh, do is to set up your hypothesis. So for our hypothesis testing, we have two hypotheses. One is the no hypothesis. So in the no hypothesis, we, we say, uh, we have a statement like that. Your pop we assume that the population proportion is equal to a value. Okay. So it's always equal statement. It's always equal. So for the alternative hypothesis, so the alternative. 
alternative hypothesis is a competing hypothesis. It's competing <coughs> with the, your null hypothesis. So for the alternative, you also state something like your population proportion is, so we got three options not equal to the value, or greater than the value, or less than the value. We have to choose one of us, depending on uh, what conclusion you want to make. So if we would just want to pass, if the population primary is not equal to, it's different from the hypothesized value, which is not equal to. Or sometimes we want to prove that uh, after you implement uh, a, pro uh, a pro promotion or uh, you invest in some invest some money in the advertisement, you want to see uh, the proportion is greater than the previous one, then you are going to use the greater than. So choosing one of them, so which one should we choose? It depends on what you, uh, what conclusion you want to make. So after we have this, we want to, so we have the class sample. So after we collect sample, we want to use the sample information to see <coughs> if we should reject the no hypothesis or we fail to reject the no hypothesis. So when we do this conclusion, we have to put our sample information in a normal distribution. So we have to put our sample information into a normal distribution. So the standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation is one. So that's the definition of standard normal distribution. And we, after we have the sample, we have to calculate our sample statistic <laughs> or the, our sample proportion. So let's say from the sample, we have our sample proportion. Uh, let's say, let's just use one example, one point one. Then, so this is this is the value from our sample. After we have this sample statistic, we have to convert it to the least or or we call it <coughs> statistic. So after some manipulation, maybe it's, it's equal to point one or something. So we have a, a expression for calculating the least or. So you can refer to the PowerPoint slide or the uh, textbook. Then what the next step is put this number into this um, into this standard normal distribution. So if you find out this statistic or this test statistic put it over there. If this test statistic defines a really small probability, so which we call p-value. So this one, so just in case this one plus this one together, so that's called p-value. So if the p-value is really small, that means we see a really rare example even this is true. So if the p-value is really small, we say the null hypothesis is equal. We reject the null hypothesis. <coughs> if our p-value, this probability is relatively large, we say we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So those, we, those are the two conclusions we can make. So how do we define if the p-value is a large one or a small one? We have to compare it with our alpha level. So let me go back. Uh, so alpha level is our threshold. So we have to compare our p-value with our alpha level. If the p-value, so let's remember those two scenarios and how we make the conclusion according. So if our p-value is greater than, let's say, less than, if the p-value is less than our alpha level, that means we need to reject our null hypothesis. So if the p-value is <coughs> less than our alpha value, we reject. Okay. This is wrong and this is right. 
So if the p-value is less than alpha level, but if if the p-value is not less than our alpha level, we do not have you know, we, what we want to say is that we fail to reject this one. We are not sure if this is correct or not. So we say we fail to reject the null no hypothesis. So those are the two scenarios we have to consider. <coughs> so it's comparing the, our p-value with our alpha value. So that's a process, the whole process of doing hypothesis testing for the population proportion. So that's what we covered in the last class. So let's just name uh, this one as p-value method because we want to calculate the p-value and compare that with alpha level. Let's refer, it, uh, refer to it as uh, p-value method. And there's one uh, more method for uh, making our question rules, which is a little bit different from the p-value method, but the logic-wise is similar. So the critical value method, so if you look at it, so we we'll, in the table we listed the possible alpha level. <coughs> so for the R, for each alpha level, we have critical value. So how do we use this uh, critical value? We, if you use this critical value method, you don't have to <coughs> calculate the, the p-value. You don't have to calculate the probability. So we will use another, a little, bit, a little bit different way to do this problem. Still, we need this standard normal distribution. Standard normal distribution. Instead of uh, calculating the probability, Let's put our alpha level into this standard normal distribution first. So let's say uh, we are doing a two-sided hypothesis testing and we select the alpha level as 0 0.05. So that means let's put our alpha level as a probability in this standard normal curve. Then let's find the critical value. So this tail plus this tail has to be 0 0.05. So we put our alpha level into this standard normal curve, and we want to find this value. So this value, according to the table, is equal to 1.96. So that's, this critical value defines 0 0.05 in the standard normal distribution. And then, <coughs> we want to put our critical value into uh, sorry not critical value but our test statistic into this standard normal curve. Let's compare our test statistic with the critical value <coughs> instead of comparing the p value with the, or the probability with the alpha value. So if our critical value is in this region, so in this case it should be somewhere around here, so point 0.1, if the p-value is in this region, we say we fail to reject the normal hypothesis. But <coughs> if our z statistic <coughs> or the test statistic is beyond the critical value, we say we reject the null hypothesis. So the most, for the most of the part, uh, the critical value method and the p-value method, uh, they're, they're, they're very, very similar. But uh, the only difference is the last step. Should we use the p, should we compare our p-value that is defined by our test statistic with our alpha level? Or let's put the alpha level into the standard normal curve first, then we compare our z statistic with the critical value method. So that's the last time. So that's the only difference. So if you look at this figure, so we have three scenarios. If your alternative hypothesis is less than same, so it's uh, in this scenario. You put your upper level into the standard normal curve, then you can find this critical value. And then you put your test statistic or 
you know, this statistic into this figure. So if your test statistic or the D statistic is in the green region, in the green region, we fail to reject. And if you if your D statistic is in the red area, we call it rejection region. So if your test statistic in the rejection region, you reject no, no hypothesis. Otherwise, you fail to reject it. So similar to the second one, if the is greater, is greater than statement. So the left hand side is the uh, uh, we we do not call it uh, uh, acceptance region. Let, let's just call it fail to reject. Uh, region. Let's call the, the red <coughs> as a rejection region. And for the last scenario, not equal to statement. So you have, if you want to reject your no hypothesis, your test statistic has to be either here or there. So if your test statistic is in either of those to tell you reject the no hypothesis. <coughs> Otherwise, you fail to reject the no hypothesis. So that's a critical value method. Um, so in our class, we are only required to uh, know the p-value method, but this is uh, one additional uh, method that I want to introduce. So for the most part, it's uh, similar. Those two methods are similar. The only difference is in the last step, which value uh, to be used to do the comparison. So that's a pretty bad thing. So, but when you want, when you use the step bounds, uh, it's the p value method. So the step bounds will give you the, the p value, and then you have to compare your the p value with your alpha value. So, if you are interested, uh, after the class, you can do more research on the critical value method. Uh, otherwise, uh, you are required to know how to uh, use step count to calculate the p-value and then compare your p-value with the alpha. Yes? Well, step count, um, which calculator or what would you use to get your critical value? Uh, your step count, we do not have the function to calculate the critical value. Okay. Uh, but you, you can calculate uh, the p-value using the Excel function. So because assuming you, you want to have an alpha level as 0 0.05, so that means in a standard normal curve, <coughs> the best region is 0 0.05. So probably it's 0 0.05, then you use the standard norm, the standard um, sorry, the normal uh, distribution function, you can find this one. Oh. But in the second, unfortunately, we don't have the, the function to find the good one. Any other questions? So now we are done with the hypothesis setting for the proportion. So the next or the last topic for the hypothesis setting is doing this hypothesis testing for the population mean. So all the discussion we had was about uh, the population proportion. So we, instead of uh, or not this one. So instead of talking about the proportion, we will talk about the population mean. Let's get rid of this one. So right now, the population parameter that we are interested in is the mean, not proportion anymore. But procedure-wise, it's very, very similar. So when we set up the hypothesis testing, in the no hypothesis, we still have the equal statement. So we assume that the population mean is equal to a value. So let's use, let me just use this uh, mu zero to denote it. And in the alternative hypothesis, we still have the three options, not to go greater than or less than. It really depends on uh, what conclusion you want to make. So just like this example, someone uh, served did some survey. Uh, 25 <coughs> randomly selected um, customers. And I think that person wants to find the age or the average age or the mean age of the customer. So 
So based on the sample uh, from the 25 uh, survey customers, uh, the mean age was 25.08 and standard deviation was 9.49. Then the owner, that person wants to know if the mean age of all the customers is 21 years old or not. So after we read the question, we know it's about the population parameter that they want to study is about the mean value. It's not a proportion, it's a mean value. So after this class, when we work on the assignment again, we have to know the first thing we have to know is that if this question is talking about the mean or the proportion. And if you see the keyword like average or the mean, you need to know, okay, it's talking about the mean. The population parameter is the mean value, not the proportion. Okay. So how do we do this hypothesis test? So still we need to set up our hypothesis. So in the no hypothesis, it's always equal, it's always equal. We don't have to worry about the not equal to greater than or less, it's always equal. So because they want to know if the mean age is 21 or not, so in the no hypothesis, let's assume it is 21. It is 21, let's assume that. But the competing statement is that it's not equal to 21, so they have to be competing statements. So the alternative is mu, the population mean is not equal to the mu zero or it's not equal to 21. <coughs> then I talk about the whole process. The whole process is very similar to the uh, one about the proportion. So let's assume the no hypothesis. Let's assume the, the population mean is equal to 21. Let's assume that. Then that person had a sample. If it is 21, the population mean, the mean age of all the customers is 21, your sample y bar can be converted to a t value or the t statistic. So what is the t statistic? So it's y bar your sample, uh, sample mean minus your hypothesis population value, which is 21, and over the standard deviation, that's your sample standard deviation, over square root of your sample size. So this one is in your no hypothesis, and sample mean, so that's something we get, we can calculate from the sample, sample standard deviation is also from the sample, the sample size is also from our sample. So we have all the values to calculate the t statistic. <coughs> It's also kind of past statistic. So we assume that the t statistic or the t value follows the t distribution. So we cover the t distribution in the previous class. Then similarly to the proportion, we want to put our t statistic into a t, t curve. So if our t statistic is kind of in the middle area, it's in the middle area, <coughs> we fail to reject because it's not a rare sample. But if our t statistic is in the corner or is in the tail, which is far away from the mean, that means we see a really rare sample, even the no hypothesis is true. In that case, we say the no hypothesis is wrong. We reject the no hypothesis. So still we we want to put the t or put our test statistic in a distribution and we see if that t statistic, t statistic or the test statistic defines a really small probability or it defines a large probability. If it defines a really small probability, we reject the no hypothesis. But if it defines a relatively large probability, we fail to reject. So this whole process is very similar to the one we discussed for the proportion, but there's only one difference, which is the test statistic. When we were talking about the proportion, here we calculated the z, but here if you talk about the mean, we need to talk about the we need to calculate the <coughs> so that's the only difference. Then we put the, our test statistic in, in the corresponding curve, then we see 
we compare the p-value, so the probability we want to see is the p-value compare our p-value with the alpha value. That's, that's the whole problem. So that's the hypothesis testing for the mean. So any questions regarding this, this whole problem? mean, so that's what we get from our sample. This is the value, that's the assumed uh, population parameter with the population mean. Over the standard error, where we use this formula small n <coughs> over square root of n. So sample standard deviation over square root of your sample size. <coughs> so that's how, how we calculate for the t statistic for the <coughs> then you put your t statistic into the corresponding p, p curve, and then you will get the p value. You compare the p value with your r value. So let's remember the difference. So if you talk about the proportion, you use the z. If you talk about the mean, you use t. So that's a major difference. Let's see one example. We don't have to, uh, when we do the hypothesis, hypothesis testing, <coughs> when we want to come to the p value, we don't have to manually do the calculation. So, for this example, let me show you how to calculate the p value in the sample. So, here we have uh, 30 insurance policies. Uh, so, the management wants to know if there's evidence that the mean profit. Of policies sold by this sales representative is less than fifteen thousand. So they collected sample from thirty policies. So I'm sure that that sales representative that or that salesperson sold more than thirty, maybe three hundred or maybe five hundred, but they only collected thirty policies. You want to use this sample to determine if that person's average profit is less than 15,000. Probably if their his profit is less than 15,000, uh, they have to do some training and so on and so forth. But uh, let's focus on the value first. So based on their calculation from the 30 policies, the mean profit is 48.9 and they have the standard deviation. So given this one, before we putting this one into the uh, stack crunch, we'll calculate uh, calculating the p-value. So we have to set up our hypothesis. So that's the very first step. And it's very important step. So after reading this question, you know it's talking about the mean because it says the mean profit. So our no hypothesis is <coughs> is the mean profit is equal to what is the value that they are interested in, 15,000. So that's our no hypothesis. It's always equal. We don't have to struggle with less than or greater than. So that's always equal. The problem is, what is the alternative profit? What is the competing thing? <coughs> so should I use not equal to or greater than or less than? Less than. So it's from the question. So they want to know if the mean is less than 15,000. It's less than. So they want to prove in this one. So it's less than. So that's our hypothesis. And let me give, uh, write down one more thing. So n, the sample size, probably it's the sample size n is equal to 30. So that's our hypothesis. So no and alternative. Then let's use the second to do this problem. So 
So before we go to Stack Overflow, any questions <coughs> on this setup? Enter the mean. Uh, <coughs> so the mean is one four three eight point nine. Standard deviation is one three two nine point six, and the sample size is thirty. So that's a, that's the inputs we need to give. So those numbers are from our sample. Then the next one, we need to define our hypothesis. Uh, the null hypothesis, so based on our discussion here, we assume that the mean, the mean profit is equal to 15,000, and the, the alternative is, is less than 1,500. Less than. So please make sure those two values or those two selections are correct. Otherwise, you will get a, a wrong p value. So, 1500 less than, I think that's all we need. Then, let's click compute. So, we have the p value. So, the p value is 0. 0.4015. So in real application, you have to make your conclusions. But before you make conclusions, you have to select your alpha level. So let's just say alpha level is 0 0.05. So that's our alpha level. Then what we need to do is to compare our p <coughs> value with our alpha level. And apparently, even if we say it's 0 0.1, the p value is greater than value is greater than your alpha value. So in this case, should we reject the no hypothesis or we fail to reject? So if you do not remember the two cases, you can go back to the um, textbook. So if the p-value is greater than our alpha level, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means we do not have enough evidence to say the mean is equal to 1500, or we have no, we do not have enough evidence to say the mean is less than 1500. So if we go back to the question, Based on the results, we do not have enough evidence to say that uh, sales representative profit, uh, mean profit is less than 1500. Although based on the sample, although based on the sample, the sample mean is less than 15,000. But regarding to the whole <coughs> whole sales from the, this person, we do not have enough evidence to say his or her mean profit is less than 15,000. Uh, so that's based on our analysis, because the p-value is greater than our alpha. <coughs> so that's our conclusion. Although the sample mean is less than 1,500, but for the, for the whole, all the sales, we do not have enough evidence to say it's less than 1,500. So any questions? I'm using seconds to get the p-value. So there's a 
relationship between the confidence interval and the hypothesis. So with that, the first method that we learned to study the population parameter is the confidence interval. We, we can draw interval to capture the mean population parameter. In the second one, it's called hypothesis test. And there is a relationship between them. So the re relationship is a confidence interval with the confidence level C percent, the C is a, uh, a constant value, correspond to the two study hypothesis testing with the alpha level of 100 minus C percent. So for example, if you want to do a hypothesis testing with the alpha level of 0 0.05, then this one corresponds to a confidence interval with a confidence level with 1 minus 0 0.05, which is 0.95. So basically, they, are, they will give you the same result. So you can either do a hypothesis or a confidence interval. So if your confidence level is 95% or 0.95, the corresponding hypothesis testing or the two sided hypothesis testing, you have to do an alpha level of 0.05. So your confidence level is equal to 1 minus your alpha level. So that's the relationship. The confidence level is equal to 1 minus your alpha level, or the level of hypnosis. I think we have one, uh, one question in our assignment. Let's do this together. <coughs> the chapter 10 assignment, question number 2. So in the no hypothesis, it's always equal, equal statement. So we don't have to worry about the, the sign, it has to be equal, but uh, what's it? A and B is the P is equal to 0.38, the C and D, the P is equal to 0.35. So what is a, you know, in our hypothesis, no and alternative, we have to talk about the population price, <coughs> which is, which one is the uh, hypothesized population proportion? 0.35 or 0.38? 0.38. 0.38. 
So that's the population parameter or the population proportion we want to test. <coughs> so the population proportion that we want to test is 0.38, either of A or B. What is the, what is the alternative hypothesis? Less than or not included. So let's go back to the question. So what conclusion do we need to make? What do, do they want to make? So it says does the poll support this claim? It's asking. It's asking if the sample, or they they want to know if the real population mean is equal to. 0.38 or not. So they do not <coughs> care if it's less than or greater than. So if it, it say if it says they want to know if the public proportion or the percentage is less than 0.38, they have to men specifically mention it's less than or greater than. Then you can choose the co corresponding less than or greater than. If it doesn't mention that kind of word, it means it's not equal. So that's our hypothesis. Then we have to check some conditions. The data are independent because we have the random sample, it should be fine. Uh, there are more than 10 successes and 10 failures. I think uh, they have a large sample size, so you have to copy the P times N and one minus P so if those two values are greater than 10, it should be fine. So we don't have to do the calculation because it's, this number is this number is really large. <coughs> so it's good. So less than 10% of the population. How do we know this? So here's the sample size. It's a large country. So it's a large country. We assume that it's if we we talk about the large country, it should have a population that is maybe greater than one million people. So the sample size is this one. So we should be good with ten percent of uh, population. And the sample is random. It says it's random, so we are good with it. Then the next one is so what is the confidence interval? So. Give a few numbers 27, 39. So that's our sample size. We are giving the sample size. Uh, the sample size. <coughs> is, and we, got, we are given the sample proportion. So, what is the number of successes? I think this time we have to do some. We are given the sample size. <coughs> Just put the sample size here for us. Thirty-nine is number of successes. Thirty-five percent of 
those people believe the economy is good, so we have to do a little bit of it. So for example, that Alexander thirty nine times for that our uh, number of success. So in this question, we have to do a little bit of it. If you believe uh, you got a wrong answer because of the <coughs> rounding issue, please let me know. I can so this time I can give you partial credit. So I cannot give you the full credit. So if please go back to check all your answers. If you believe you got a, a wrong answer because of rounding, you can let me know. I I will take a look and uh, hopefully I can give you a partial credit. So that's the concept in the room. So does your constant interval support the claim or not? So what do you think? So here's your constant interval. <coughs> does your constant interval support the claim or not? That the population prevalence, the population proportion is 0.38, and here is our constant. So the upper limit of our constant is 0.398. So it's it's outside of the, the constant limit. So our constant interval does not support the claim because it's outside of. So for the population proportion in the no hypothesis is not within the interval. So there's evidence that the proportion is not coincident. So although we did see the constant interval, the conclusion we made is for the hypothesis test. So there's enough evidence to say the proportion is not 0.38 because the is not in the constant interval. And the last one, with alpha level. So confidence level, so in the confidence the interval, the confidence level is 95% or 9.95. We know that is equal to one minus alpha. So 0.95 is equal to one minus alpha. So in this case, alpha will be 0 0.05. So the last question, for the last question, you have to use this relationship. The confidence level is equal to one minus <coughs> alpha. So that's 0 0.05.
we link those two together, the concept in general and how to do So any questions on this? So let's remember this really. Constant level is equal to one minus your alpha level. <coughs> so the process, actually we already covered the whole process. So set up your hypothesis setting, no an alternative, and we kind of uh, covered all those things. So we are gonna skip those processes, and reasoning, judgment, we'll make our decisions. So the last topic we have is talking about error. So when we do the hypothesis testing, we can make some errors. We can, we can make some mistakes. There are two types of errors that we, we will have when we do the hypothesis testing. It's called type one error and type two error. So what is type one error? So type one error is that Actually, the no hypothesis is true. The no hypothesis is actually, actually true. But when you do the hypothesis testing after you get the sample, you, you get the p-value, then you rejected the no hypothesis. In fact, the no is true. In fact, the no, this statement is true, but after you do some sample, you rejected the no hypothesis. You said it is wrong, but actually it is true. So that's a type of error. <clears throat> so type two error. The type two error is that, in fact, this statement, the no hypothesis is wrong. In fact, the no hypothesis is wrong, but you did not reject the no hypothesis for some reason, based on your sense you fail to reject the no hypothesis, but you should, you should have rejected the no hypothesis. So that's type one error and type two error. Normally we use the alpha to denote the type one error and we use beta to denote the type two error. So the definition is the type one error definition and type two error definition are very important. So after class, let's uh, let's make sure we know the, those two definitions. So we don't have enough time to give some examples in this class, but we will do that in the next class. So I want to reserve about 15 minutes to give a quiz. So next class, we will talk about some uh, uh, applications or some examples of the type one error and type two error. So uh, I think that's gonna be the last topic we have uh, in the whole chapter. But we are going to do a, a quiz today. So for the quiz, you don't have to do, uh, you don't have to do it, but, uh, you need to write down, write down the answer for those three questions. So if you do not have a pen or pencil, please borrow one from your I only had one, but I, I, I borrowed it. Okay, that's good. So you're given a description. Then the first thing you need to answer is that, is this question, is this about <coughs> testing about proportion or mean? So that's the very first question. Second question, you need to write down the hypothesis, no and alternative. And the third one, the last one, you need to tell me if your alternative hypothesis is one-sided or two-sided. Still no calculation is needed, but you need to set up your 